Please welcome Stephen Watt. Yeah, I'm going to start with a poem which is brought to you by the letter G and it's all about these kind of gigs that you go to in Glasgow with your pals that are no longer there. It's called Glasgow's Gig Ghosts. Glasgow gigs. Gallus, scorbles to Garnet Hill, generations of gig going gadgies gravitate to Gallagate, generally gathering to guzzle god awful glass grog. Gammy legs and glow sticks gel, giving generous gunshots to God, go in your cell. Glaky groups gop his gear, amps, guitars are glamping, gallant aft to gum, gum tree, even gum tea, gum tree, guaranteed gratification. The greatest gigs gash your gub, then guide a grotty gaffer garden, guffin of grass, where your gang greedily gnash grilled grub out of a gawk. Glory be the Glasgow gloom, gyrating ghoulies like gaunt gangly gingerbread gargoyles full of gusto and low grade gear. Grasp your glass, here. Greet our grey, guttered ghosts guising in Glasgow's gloaming gales. Good guys, gone, but nae got over. Cheers. Thank you. Um, my next poem is specifically with one nightclub in mind, but I don't want to kind of tarnish your own memories from this, so I'll just give you the title and you can make up your own uh, minds. This is called Scumbag Nightclubs. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody say the moon? <laughs> If anybody hasn't been to the moon, by the way, it was the gentleman outside in Sucky Hall Street dressed as a gorilla or a spaceman and... <laughs> a lopsided grin exhibits contorted teeth which wouldn't touch the chocolate on a curly whirly. This rite of passage leads down a written-off passage where a glory hole in a public lavatory is being depicted as a cloakroom. <laughs> And it's 50-50 if you will ever see that jacket again. <laughs> when the stale smoke machine unclogs, a sinister forest of disagreeable critters emerges in the form of sweaty Ben Sherman shirts or mini-skirted miners, and you swear you see Peter Sutcliffe licking his fingers, then writing your initials on his greasy mirrors inside a deformed love heart. Someone wears a tux and slugs, smurn of ice and plastic tumblers because glass is forbidden in here. <laughs> Dealers mix in with tourists, keeping themselves to the edges or in the darkened corners where teenagers become careless with their Velcro wallets and fake designer purses. And music reverberates like air raid sirens where a bombing would be a blessing. All bad habits are dancing on the toffee pudding carpets where uneven bowling shoes eternally lie abandoned and if it wasn't for the uploaded pictures taken on friends' camera and social media or an inherited whiff of cool waters, you would swear it never happened. Nobody is ever refused entry, whether they are wasted on chemicals or drugs. Yet we take our lives into our hands each time our broken down plans lead us through the doors of these scumbag nightclubs. Cheers. I've got the twitchiest right leg all the time and I can just see myself booting this chair. Um, so this one, every single thing which is listed in this poem has been extracted from the human body. Um, this, this is my thank you to the NHS. Uh, and it's a punk poem, it's called Action Man Isn't Coming Back. <laughs> Still got a giggle like that. Candlesticks, headphones, bite reflector, cell phones, crack pipes, cotton balls, colour pencils, Barbie dolls, toy ones, scented soap, the odin cap, dominoes, coke bottles, dumbbells, prosthetic eyeballs. Explain that one to the hospitals. <laughs> Frozen hot dogs, light bulbs, chest piece, a ripe banana, shot glass, nail files, a Wi Fi, router antenna, toothbrush, drumsticks, cigarette and lighter, remote controls, dildos, a Donny Osmond poster. <laughs> Explain that one to the doctor. Vibrator, turkey paste, a perfume bottle, coat hanger, screwdriver, rock salt, earbuds, condom wrapper, fidget spinner, plastic spider, action figure, laser pointer, tape dispenser, egg timer, plastic saw, thermometer. <sighs> she just didn't want to disappoint her. <laughs> 
microchip, bits of puzzle, half a butter bagel, juice box straw, water, gun, plunger handle, a drill bit, a stuffed bird, wood chip, a piece of bed, detergent pod, hearing aid, folding knives and razor blades. Shall I play nursemaid? Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. I recorded um, a couple of uh, poems for Cam Glenn Radio and they chose not to use that one. <laughs> um, for my sins, I'm also the poet in residence at Dumbarton Football Club, so I write a lot of football poetry, which I know doesn't always appeal to every audience you might be reading in front of. I've written a very short one, so hopefully you can stick with this. It's called Two Footed Tackle. I think that pretty much tells you all. <laughs> Right, if that's a two-footed tackle, only some sort of unshackled animal would channel such a feral daredevil challenge in his blind spot. Look, he's torn his Adam's apple. A tussle has turned evil, turned a man into cereal, snap, crackle and pop. You can't call a rival fragile when he looks like cattle that's been shot. Oh. God, there's studs embedded in his ankle. It's like a scrambled puzzle, a jigsaw, a turtle squashed by an anvil. I think I'm going to be sick. A disciplinary panel will need to untangle this unnatural scandal. Be tactful with the national media and original and explaining to the faithful at the hospital or the funeral why that there was not a free kick. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll make this my last one, guys. Um, I think Ali, Julie and David have seen me perform a number of times and know how shocking I am at trying to do mem poems from memory. So if I fail with this one, I'll just walk off the stage. If you just give us a wee plight of applause, it'd be great. Uh, this one's called Never Trust a Man Who Doesn't Dance to Ska. <laughs> I've placed my faith in French cinematographers, widescreen alters, an endless franchise of Star Wars and shoddily filmed Hammer Horrors as a means of motion gratification. I've delved into books by bourgeois authors, paragons of honour living the top bedside drawer when beneath the bed monsters have pill for my own imagination. I've trusted in gym-hungry dietitians, figure-hugging hugging statisticians, the gospel quotes of electricians and even the occasional politician when the haircut borders on mud. I've indulged in harmless superstitions, witnessed apparitions when I've missed my medication. My friends had their reservations when I mistook the pet Alsatian as God. But just as synthesizers plugged into Yamahas and Joe vanished to rock the Casper, I swore to never trust a man who does not dance to ska. I've pledged confidence in wacky bass and groovy horns, the breakneck pace where coffee was born, a two-tone race that is willingly multiform, reggae to rocksteady, dub to punk, in the beats of electronic persuasion, and the anarchists from a blank generation, and the rude boys, reckless reputations, paisley patterns had both the rhythm and the funk, and just as stand innovations were given to the Jamaicans for donating to the world a knack for melodic algebra, we swore to never trust a man who doesn't dance to ska. So thank you, Prince Buster, Brian Lee and the Dragonaires, the Scatalites, Bad Manners, Bob Marley and the Whalers, the Specials, the Beat, the Selector, the Soul Vendors, the Ethiopians, the Amphetamines and the Toasters, because otherwise I could forever bid my childhood, <laughs> could forever bid my childhood posters bonsoir if I was never able to trust in men who knew how to dance to ska. Cheers. Cheers.